Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for giving us a click of your time. We're about to talk to Nikki Damar about a whole lot. Demi Lovato, her sister Gabby, music. Uh, we got things. Leave your honest feedback in the comment section below, please. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe, even if you hate us. And please, turn your notifications off. Okay, I think she's here. Let's do this. Hey, beautiful human. We're here with uh, Nikki Damar. What's up? Yo. Hey. Did I say your name correctly? Okay, so it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, my real last name is DiMartino, so I guess it's Nikki Damar. You could say the E quick, like Damar, like a lot of people do that, or Damar. Um, I think Damar means like ocean in another language or something. Ooh. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard it all, but it's not that fancy. I just like to shorten my last name because... I never felt like I was given this extravagant Italian name when I was born. It's my full name. It's oh, Nicola Teresa Di Martino. Like, <laughs> so, <which coast. laughs> so I always felt like really casual. I'm a casual person and I'm just like to the point. So I thought like Nikki, like when I was little, I started going by Nikki and then like screw the Nicola thing. I never went by that. And then uh, Di Martino, when I got in high school and got my first Instagram, there's no way I wanted my username to be that long. So I just did Nikki Di Mar. And then- Now you're at Nikki. Yeah, yes, now we keep shortening. <laughs> so yeah, that's like the story behind it. But now that's my artist name because that's who, like that's me is Nikki Di Mar. Like everything I've done with that username is like, is me now. I am kind of fascinated, and by kind of, I mean very fascinated in your life and in what you're doing because you got two different YouTube channels that are going. Like, you're actively creating content. You have a music career that's really doing something. You have a remix for a Christmas song out now. You have two singles. And beyond all of that, like, you have a twin sister who's also making music. I... We are, you're in Pennsylvania right now. I have so many questions for you. I know. It's crazy. I know. We have a very interesting life. Like, I literally can't relate to anybody. But at the same time, you seem pretty normal. But your boyfriend's your photographer, right? <laughs> He's like my renaissance man. He does everything. Like, he'll record me in his basement. He recorded Alone in My Car and Sad Holiday invited me. Um, and we send my sessions off to my producers. And he he records me. He takes my Instagram photos. He films for my YouTube channels. He's my it guy. Like, we're very, like, yeah. How long have y'all been together? Four years. This It's so weird to say that. Like, in the wintertime. Like, Whoa. in January. So, you guys have clearly figured out how to sh where you eat. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even say figured it out. I think, like, we've had no choice but to, like, just deal with it. Because, like, I'm not going to lie, like, um, it's been a lot. And then, and then like working together, living together, and then quarantine, two lockdowns. I'm like, oh, this is the only interaction I get is him. <laughs> How do you all meet? And at what, like, uh, and at what point in the relationship does he go, you know, like, I can help you out with some things? Uh, we met like professionally, like I had no relationship outside of work for six months. Like that was in 2016. Um, we both went through breakups at the same time, and then we just started getting drunk together. <laughs> Sounds so bad. <laughs> but then we just, like, became best friends, and it just happened. He didn't even ask me out. Um, and now I would like to say, he's just, like, we have a really good work relationship. Yeah. I mean, personally? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, we're definitely, like, being tested right now, 100%. Uh, everybody is. So... You know, and it, it, it isn't you, it's everything. I know, it's just kind of the life circumstances right now, but like, what are, what are we going to do? Life is literally out of our control right now, like completely out of our control. Yeah, it is, uh, it'll get better though. Yes. Well, how are you feeling these days? Because sad holiday is about not feeling great during the holidays, and we are right in the middle of holiday season. I, it's interesting because I had such a good summer with everything, like all of our freedoms and everything we were once used to having that all taken away from us was really traumatic in the spring, but by summer we were used to this new normal and we were starting to appreciate like the little things. Um, instead of doing the whole like FOMO and comparing my life online, I really just focused on like 
the good things in my personal life that I could have while lockdown was still like happening. So I was doing a lot of beach trips with my friends and I was happy, genuinely happy. And um, then lockdown stopped life went a little bit back to normal and all my friends that were out of work because I live I live a normal life out here like all my friends have nine to fives like nobody is an influencer who's my friend how so, long have you been in Pennsylvania my whole life and then I moved to LA for a year and a half and it didn't work and I moved home and now I'm, I don't know where I belong that's why I write about being confused and sad and lonely all the time I just I don't fit in you know oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, I was really happy in the summer I had a high summer a load of my car really blew my mind how it did. I had I did not expect that. I really built my artist profile, my monthly listeners, and the streams did not expect that. And I released Bite of Me, and then I went. I've been going to LA when things were getting normal, actively getting tested for COVID, being safe but still living my life. And then I feel like now is a low in December because um, I think November was a rough month too because I always deal with seasonal depression. I was expecting to get sad this year, but um, I didn't expect like a full on second lockdown. Like Pennsylvania is completely locked down. California is completely locked down. If I was to go any other place besides Pennsylvania, it'd be LA. I'm like, yeah, that's locked down. So like, there's nothing for me to do right now. My friends that are, have nine to fives are in Jersey, which isn't locked down. So they have normal work. Yeah. So I, no one's like available. No one's around. I'm just kind of alone in my apartment and in my car. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I, first of all, love that you're still on the East Coast. Why was it, why weren't you a match for LA? I feel like I have so many layers to me and I'm so deep. I, I just go so deep and I need, like I crave deep connections and I felt like everything, anytime I tried, it was so surface level. Yeah. It, it like crushed my little heart. Like, I love the sun and I love the palm trees and I love the opportunity. And I feel like at the end of the day, I'll always be chasing LA and I'll always be trying to move back out there and always failing and moving home. Like, I feel like I'm in this really bad cycle because that's where I should be. But my heart is so deep and I, maybe I just didn't meet the right people. I don't know. Are, are you saying people are too shallow here? I, the people, maybe it's the influencer world. I don't know. I, d I didn't have a good experience and I wish it wasn't like that because I really see a future out there. How'd so you maybe, know you... maybe I just need to try again, you know? How'd you know you needed to leave? You know when you just like get a gut feeling? I don't, I hated that my gut was saying this because I wanted to love LA. Like I made the whole move. It was so expensive. And like, I felt like I was, I would, if I moved home, I'd be like a failure. And, um, the way that I had a gut feeling when I started all these like YouTube channels and like doing like a load in my car, like anytime I have a gut feeling, like I feel like I have to listen to it because every time I've ignored my gut, it do things don't work in my favor. And I don't know what the point of moving home was. Maybe it was to be home when the world shut down and maybe it was so I could write music here and be inspired here and have my family close by. But I know I had to move home. And now I'm having this gut feeling about LA again. So like, I don't understand why the universe wants me to move around so much. And like, like, I don't know. Like, I just listen to like what I'm feeling, but also not just emotions. It's, it's like deeper than that. It's like a knowing, you know? What are you saying alone in my car and bite of me wouldn't exist if you didn't go home? No, they wouldn't. So maybe that's the purpose. I think so. They're because two great I records. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know what to expect when... You know, I was like diving in real talk. Like, <laughs> clue. Um, yeah, they're great. They really surprised me in the best possible way. Um, surprised me based on how great the lyrics are, how strong your voice is. I mean, if I was your sister, I'd be a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> it was the other way around growing up. What does that mean? I, I've become talkative with people I'm comfortable with or when it has to do with like my career or things I'm passionate about. But like for the longest time, like even as a kid, I was like such an introvert and she was outgoing. So for the longest time, I was scared of her. I was like, how are you so such a people person? How do you make friends? Like, I didn't understand. What is the relationship with your sister like now? Because y'all have a YouTube channel, but she makes music as well. Yeah. So we've had this talk so many times. We used to do music together and I'm sure you, you maybe fell down that rabbit hole. Um, 
Yes, we, man. I was always oh, I, listen, I, I listened to Hair Tie, and I, I didn't know what it was about, and I wasn't expecting it to be about what it was about. What is it about? Well, I thought it was about hair t- uh, about putting your hair up, but it's about putting your hair up when you need to do something and your hair gets in your face. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> that is iconic forever. We knew we just wanted to do that for fun. We literally blew our money for fun. We're like, let's just do a music video about this song. We found it like in 2015, but our managers were like, no, you're too young. You can't do this. And then finally our manager was like, it's, you're ready. You guys are 23. You can do it. And we're like, okay. <laughs> but Nikki and Gabby was just more fun and like that channel was iconic so we just wanted to do iconic things together and get people talking but I was always a little like more passionate and like controlling um I was always like more like I had a vision and Gabby did it for fun and that's where we would clash and then eventually I realized you should never compromise on your art and you should never put out something you don't connect with. And I had a talk with her around when I released Sad Holiday. And I was like, hey, I, I just don't feel the, the Nikki and Gabby music anymore. Like, I love the channel, but I just feel like I want to release my own music. She was totally cool about it. She was so supportive of Sad Holiday. And Sad Holiday is what, like, brought me, like, my music team. And then, like, even though that song doesn't have anything really, like, that monumental about it, it really brought me into the music world and got the right eyes on it and really resonated with my fans. I feel like ever since that, I've just gotten so close to them because that was such an honest song about like how I really feel uh, versus like singing about hair ties. So um, I, I just feel like now we, we have had these conversations where Gabby's like, oh, I'm more of like, I want to be a family blogger one day and an entrepreneur and do music for fun. Like she's more so thinking about her brand as a, as a whole. And then there's me that's just like diving my face and my whole body into music. So it's like two different approaches and ideas of what we're doing. Do you see a day where this is all you do is music? Yeah. I mean, I hope, I mean, I'm not gonna say I hope cause that's, I'm manifesting it. Like that is going to be my life one day. Uh, I went on like a really bizarre YouTube tour in 2016 where we just toured our YouTube channels with other YouTubers. It's really a unique, interesting tour. I definitely think the parents were wondering like what they bought tickets for. <laughs> like it was definitely weird. The parents would like all get drunk in the back at like of the venues and like the kids would just be like, yeah. <laughs> and I just, I remember being kind of like embarrassed, but like, I loved being on the road. Like I didn't like the show. I loved being on the road. And when we got home, I became like really depressed because I just didn't want to move out of the bus. And I was just like, okay, this is a feeling. This is a vibe. We just got to know what this means. What, what did you guys do on tour? It's embarrassing. Like we did covers and like Q and A's and just like felt like hot. It was so stupid. Dude, it, it, it was, I remember there was like a, a few years of YouTuber tours. I remember going to the Janoskian concert a couple times. Do you even remember who they are? Yeah, this was like a, um, an all girls lifestyle in like lifestyle YouTubers tour. And like me and Gabby obviously sang, so we did covers together because we didn't have music together at the time. And then other YouTubers just showed off their like little talents. It was like, Back in the day, it was fun, and, like, we got hype for no reason, but um, looking back, it's, like, cringy, but it was one of my favorite, like, highlights of my career, just because I loved being on the road and, like, singing, because I was still singing. I just hated being a cover artist. Hey, I gotta hit pause real quick to tell you about my go-to shopping buddy, Honey. I've had Honey on my uh, web browser for quite some time now. I refuse to shop online without it. I mean, I know you're shopping online, and when you check out, you see that promo code field. Usually, you don't have a promo code ready to go, and chances are there could be a promo code out there on the internet that fits the store in your purchase, so you could potentially be saving money. Honey, now, hooks you up. Doesn't matter if you have a promo code ready to go. When you're checking out, Honey will notice that you're checking out and then be like, let me search the internet for a promo code. You click it, and it will literally scour the internet for promo codes, and then it will apply the best one to your cart. Again, Honey is a free browser extension that will save you money. Honey is making manually searching for coupon codes a thing of the past. I just saved 15 bucks on a pair of Levi's jeans, all thanks to Honey. I refuse to shop without Honey. 
Like, why, why, why wouldn't I use honey? And why wouldn't you use honey? If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it installs in a few seconds. So why wouldn't you do it? Plus, if you get honey, you'll be supporting this podcast. And for that, I'll be forever appreciative. So join honey. It's free. Save money. Just go to joinhoney.com slash Zach. That is joinhoney.com slash Zach. So yeah, save some money, honey. (laughs) I get it now. Is it crazy to think sometimes that your life was changed by a Demi Lovato tutorial that you posted to YouTube? That's crazy, yeah. But we're having a full circle moment because the reason I did I started YouTube with a Demi Lovato tutorial is because I was so obsessed with her and her music. And like I knew I wanted to do that one day, but the only thing I had at my feet was, oh, a camera. I'm kind of good at makeup. Let's just do that like for fun. Like I had no idea it would build me a platform. Who would listen to my music? Crazy. I mean, I was watching your videos the past few weeks and Demi Lovato does have a bigger part in your life. Didn't she, didn't, didn't, didn't you uh, realize you were into girls because of Demi Lovato? Yes. Yes. We, yes. I, that's why I was so heartbroken when like, I like took it personally when me and my sisters auditioned for X Factor in 2013. Um, My, back in the day, like we're in a really old fashioned like household. We're super Italian and Cuban and like, they're, my parents are just all about family and as like they didn't mean to do this but they always wanted just to see the sisters together and I wanted to audition with Gabby and we you know me and Gabby at least were used to singing together so we could like you know harmonize well or whatever but then they were like no you need if you're gonna do that you guys you you need to throw in your older sister too and they literally picked her up from college and just threw her in and said okay now you guys are a girl group and we're like okay and we like and we didn't even she my older sister like didn't really ever practice with us so um obviously like our look like how we look together got us to like the celebrity round where they were filming and I don't think we sounded good but you know I was praying and I also wanted to see Demi Lovato and we got two yeses and two no's and one of the no's was Demi Lovato it wasn't enough to go to the next round if anything it was pretty embarrassing I forgot one of Demi Lovato's lyrics on stage and she like kind of called me out for it and I was so heartbroken after that I I took it like a breakup because that's like you know that was my I didn't have crushes in real life I like crushed over like Demi Lovato and I had I, I would come home from school and watch her interviews I didn't care about any of the boys in my school like it was so crazy and since that moment, you're you're heartbroken. Have no, you I got it? I got over it. She released an album. Um, I think it was self titled Demi Lovato. Like I forget. She released an album. I got over it because I, I love her music that much. And then um, I just realized she was doing her job. She had to judge, and she also had to nitpick because that was it was reality TV. And I realized, you know what? Like she judged me in my group. She didn't judge me by myself. So maybe one day, like she will like my music, or she will like me on my own. Like. I couldn't, I had to realize I can't take it to heart because like that wasn't my normal situation, you know? Send a message to Demi Lovato, please do it. Who knows? She could see this. I know she's out there on the other side of the screen somewhere. I know. I've been following her for so many years and Miley Cyrus, like it's crazy. When did you realize that you weren't just a Demi Lovato fan, but it was more like a little crush? Um, when... The skyscraper music video came out I was like I knew I felt a different type of way but I was like whatever and then um like I knew I was kind of attracted but I was like no that can't be that can't be like that's a girl and then um my sis- my twin sister Gabby surprised me with tickets to her unbroken tour so good. and I was so excited I was freaking out but I was like denying it I was like in my head I was like no Nikki you can't go you're gonna know you're attracted you can't go like I literally tried telling my sister Gabby like why I didn't want to go to the concert even though I wanted to go and Gabby's like I don't get it you love her why don't you want to go and I'm like I just can't I can't go and then eventually like I wasn't gonna say no I went and I just dove into the obsession and I was like all right this is my little secret whatever thanks for sharing you you share all aspects of your life do you right when you look at your YouTube channel is that kind of crazy to think about Yes. I I just feel like it's the name of the game. It's what I signed up for. And everyone has hated on me for so many years and has so many things to say about me. I don't think I would have been able to have been this way. Um, like when I started at all, but I think, um, 
because I've been doing this for so long, I think I'm a little bit desensitized. So like, it's made me not really have a filter because at the end of the day, like I know people are watching my stuff, even like people that live near me, like locals I, that are my age or that went to high school with me. Like I know they're watching my stuff and I know they're playing it and laughing at it and hating on it and like wanting to see me fall and thinking I'm cringy. Like I expect it all. So I don't even care. So I, I at first I tried to save face so many times and now I just know, I know that there's haters. I don't care, you know? How do you take that? Is that fuel? Does that make you want to keep going? Because there is a consistency to the art of like being a content creator on the internet, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, your first maybe even dozen videos might never have hit, but if you didn't keep going, like who knows, you know? Yeah, uh, I definitely even resonate with that right now with my channel. Um, because I did start on Nikki and Gabby and those pulling crazy views and not that my YouTube channel doesn't have enough subscribers or enough views. It's just compared to the Nikki and Gabby channel. It's definitely a little discouraging because I'm so used to getting like a million views a video or higher. And I know that's like ridiculous to even say, like, I'm so used to getting a million views, but, um, I definitely think that I'm not going to give up on my channel. Like I love my channel. It's definitely not near the numbers of Nikki and Gabby, but who's to say it will never get that big or that my music won't get that kind of views or recognition. So it's like, I didn't, I didn't start YouTube expecting numbers. It just happened. So because I kept at it and I loved it. So I feel like it's the same thing with like music and my channel and with anything I want to start, like it's not going to succeed right away. And I think that's important for people to remember, like, you know, consistency is key to like literally everything. And mm -hmm. like, why f stop? Because who knows that next one could have been the one. I know there's no point. Even I've known YouTubers that have gone at it for like six years and they don't pop off till six years into it. Like some people are lucky, like Dixie and Charlie D'Amelio, just bright place, right time, TikTok, or some people literally bust their asses and it takes them a very long time. Specifically BB Rexa. I've heard so much just, you know, by, by like somewhat do, being with music people right now. Um, I hear like the talk behind the scenes and she's, she's worked so hard to get where she is. Um, she started as a singer songwriter. Yeah, and she wrote Monster. She, and she would like sneak into sessions and like hop over fences and she would do anything to get into the room. Yeah. It's, it's like so like stories like that are so inspiring because you know it's so easy to get discouraged hearing about these overnight sensations but then you like hear about those stories and like Lady Gaga how many times she was like rejected you hear these stories and you're like that's it that's why you should never give up like you know BB is such a great example I'm really glad that you bring her up because she is dude, she worked really hard for a really hard, long time yeah. I mean I remember seeing her at Bamboozle um, like performing with, uh, with dark hair, right? Yeah. Was it black cards or something? I don't remember. I just remember like I found her when I, in like 2015 and used her songs in my YouTube videos on Nikki and Gabby when like, she wasn't even like that known and people were like, what's this song? It's so good. Oh, it's crazy. I, and also she's inspiring because sometimes people put a timestamp with your age and I'm not like this 20, 21 year old, 18 year old that I was when I started. And like, I, sometimes I play that game where I'm just like, oh, I wish I had this confidence and knew myself this well when I was, when I was like starting to grow because I, I wish I just only like focused on music because that's like ultimately what I love. So I wish I could go back sometimes, but I can't play that game because I don't think I knew myself enough to write the kind of songs I'm writing that would resonate with other people. And I, all, I like that, like, you know, like BB Rex, I like and Taylor Swift, they're like, what, 30, 31? Yeah. Like, and they're hot as f and doing great. And it's just so, I guess, intimidating seeing like all these young overnight sensations and you're only getting older and you are just figuring it out at 25, you know? It is, I, like, I understand that, but know that like some things are forever and it's, like there's a difference between timeless and a fad. And mm -hmm. we're in like such a unique period in our history for so many reasons. One of those reasons being, the massive surge of one hit wonders and like i, I mean dude the jury's still out on 98 percent of the songs and the artists being played right now you know like who knows what's going to be next it's so crazy just because you pop on tiktok doesn't mean you pop in life um or doesn't mean you can pop again you know 
That is true. You pop once doesn't mean you pop twice. I feel like that's why it's so important to be so like, I, I feel like I want people that listen to my songs to know exactly who I am from my lyrics. Lyrics are so important to me because that's the only way for people to start to learn me as an artist. Like in YouTube videos, I can sit and talk about myself, but in music, all you have is the lyrics. That's all you have to like for people to get to know you. And I want people to like know who I am and start to envision the kind of person I am and become attached for the long haul through the lyrics, you know? It's an investment in you and your life. Yes. So what were your expectations when you released Alone in My Car? I had no idea what to expect. Like, I'm not even kidding. I've released singles without my music manager in the past. And it was so stressful because I was spending all this money and writing stuff without any direction. And I was just like hoping for the best. But that's kind of a lot of money to gamble and hope for the best. Um, so I stopped, like after Sad Holiday, I said, I'm not going to release any music until I have some kind of direction or help and I think I manifested my music manager and ever since he came along we built a team and now I feel like I, I trust like my producer and everybody like I, I still am the creative I just have a lot more guidance and I think that's important for any artist you know and I, alone in my car I knew I knew the song was good and I don't want that to come off like, oh, like cocky, but like I would put it on my playlist. Like I would, I would release music that was good, but I wouldn't have on my playlist, which was really weird. I would like Let It Roar, I released in 2018, like Anthem for the Judge, Nikki and Gabby music. It, it was all catchy, but th that's the word I'm looking for. I released catchy music, but it wasn't something I'd put on my playlist. And I knew that Alone in My Car had potential. And it was catchy and it was something I put on my playlist. Um, so I knew like a good song is a good song. So I knew that like people, even if it didn't get crazy streams, because I didn't have any monthly listeners when we released it, I knew that even if it didn't get crazy streams, the people that were gonna hear it were gonna like become attached to it. And that's all that I wanted in return was to start slowly but surely building my people, like my iconics. Like I just wanted to find them, whoever they are out there. I wanted them to come across the song and become invested in me so we can start building this like relationship and keep growing together. Um, so that, that song, I just wanted to reach my people. And dude, like I did not expect the video to hit a million views or the streams to even hit a million streams. It's at almost 2 million now. And I knew that people would relate to it during quarantine because like the only other place you can be is your car. Yeah. I, I really, and during quarantine, like with the second lockdown coming, the same thing's happening where you, when you come out of lockdown number two, or even back then lockdown number one, you're like, Oh, I don't like my life right now. All my distractions are gone. What decision am I going to make to make sure my life is change for the better just in case we go into another lockdown like I was thinking a lot about changes I needed to make in my life which is why I kept saying should I leave or stay and um yeah I think that's another reason why people related so much because I think during quarantine people are like should I leave this town or stay in it should I leave this relationship or stay in it like should I leave this job or stay it's like everything is so unknown up in the air and everyone was just stuck it's like about being stuck mentally and thinking about that and being in the car it is very true that when you're alone in your car, though, those are the things you think about. You just think about everything that's going on in your life because you have nothing else to do. I know. It's so, like, ugh, stressful, but it's needed. How does the song start for you? Does it come from life, right? That's the approach you're taking. Oh, yeah. I write about my life. Like, I, I couldn't not write about my life. I'm, I wish I could write a happy song, but that has not been my headspace. So where your head is is where your pen goes. Yes. Uh, when I write, it's a coping mechanism. So like, if I'm happy, I don't need to cope about being happy. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to exercise my writing into writing when I'm in a good mood. But for me, I have to feel a type of way to write. Like I need to feel passionately this or passionately that or experience a situation and just like, I have to get it out. So that's why my songs are so dramatic and intense and, and honest, because I just, that's my only way. So I, I want to write a happy song. <laughs> How many songs do you have done right now? 
Like, you mean recorded or like written? Yeah. Like, do you have an album on the way? I would love to have an album, but I, right now I love what I'm doing. Like, I'm just picking the best of the best to release the singles and giving them their big moments. I really like yeah. when artists release singles to myself. I think sometimes when you release an album, some tracks that are perfect are overshadowed by the catchier dumbed down songs. Um, and I think like the deeper intense ones are always like never like the mainstream like singles or they're not talked about. And that always bothers me. Like my personally, my favorite songs on some albums are like not the popular favorite. So I don't know. I don't want that to happen to my music. So I'm just trying to give each song, like treat it like a baby. Like I'm giving birth each time to like a new song and they, they each get a name, a time, a month, a date, like, you know, I was like, bite of me. That's about you being a people pleaser. It sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. I was fed up when I wrote that. What situations were you putting yourself in that you were just trying to please people? I realized I had this, I was really depressed. I, it, it was right after sad holiday. I wasn't expecting to write another song, but I, I, I was wondering, okay, this can't just be seasonal depression. There's more to this. I was kind of like reflecting with myself and I was by myself in my living room and I had reached out to all these people to hang out. Nobody responded to my text. And I just like started breaking down and I was like, hold up. Why is my life so bad, but everyone around me, their life is so easy and so good. And I realized if I disappeared one day, their lives would flip upside down. And I'm not trying to give myself that much credit, but I think people are so used to relying on me in my everyday life. I realized like uh, mentally, financially, emotionally, physically, like I, I am ev there for everybody. And I wasn't there for myself. I neglected my own life. People knew that, that I would always be there. So they wouldn't respond to my texts because they knew they could treat me that way. I, my life was just so blah. Like I had nothing to look forward to. No one ever wanted to hang out with me, but everyone always needed something from me. But then when it was time for me to like want genuine connect, like connections, it was just, you know, it, it just, it made me angry. That I wrote Bite of Me when I was angry. <laughs> I guess it kind of weeds out the real friends from the fake friends though. Yes, I've changed a lot of things about my life since then. And I'm very happy with my circle right now. You know what? There's nothing wrong with putting yourself first. People, people make it seem like it's a bad thing to be selfish. Why would you not be selfish? Like, why would you not put yourself first, right? It's about, yeah, it's about your life. Like, I, I, I hate that selfish has such a bad ring to it because honestly, like, okay, there's a bad selfish, but at the end of the day, even when someone's being selfish, they're showing up and choosing themselves. Like, I think there's so many people that have not healed from trauma that are looking for validation 24 seven to the point where they're easily able to be manipulated, similar to my situation. And it makes you not be selfish, the complete opposite where you're needy, clingy, and a pushover. And I had to change. And I still am working on it because it's, it's just something you're always going to have to deal with, especially when you are your name. My nature is to be a pushover because I want to make sure everyone always feels good because I know how bad it feels to feel bad. So like I try to make like I let people down really easy. I never reject people. I never say no. Um, th that's why I said in the song, I'm saying yes when I feel no, because I'm scared that in the end I'll be alone because that's so true. Have you started saying no more these days recently? Yes, and it has not been easy. It's made people pissed at me. But I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. Like, I'm happy now. You're pissed, but I'm happy now. Well, and so, reference the song, yo. Understand where your head's at. Dude, I literally tattooed this because I have to remind myself. Oh, it's a bite of me. Oh, very cool. I was actually saw a tattoo. I was wondering what it was. So it's teeth marks. Yeah, this is teeth marks, and then this is my birth chart. Wait. Oh, very cool. Fancy. Yeah. Um, Okay, we've covered a lot here. We have music, obviously, for all to listen to. We're going to put a link in the description below. I mean, you're going to release singles. Do you have more ready to go? Do you have a plan? Do you have a calendar? Yeah, like I, my team's very on it, um, which is awesome because back in the day, like I literally felt like I was the only one like fighting for myself. But now I have people that are just as passionate, which is really cool. Like we're all like kind of really crazily ambitious, which is awesome 
And I just want to like keep going and like, I'm like, I'll do anything. I all tour, I'll release an album, but I'm just taking the lead be, like from the people that know best because I don't want to burn myself out or waste time and energy and money on a project where all the songs are going to be overshadowed. I just want to do it slow and steady wins the race, you know? It is true. And, you know, we've interviewed artists with different perspectives on it, but the one I always like share is Sia's who like won't release an album until every song on the album is a single, you know, like, I love that. Yeah. And she'll wait years, you know, and like very few know what Sia knows, you know? That's so, I didn't even know that, but I, now that you think of it, I, I see that. That's, I like that approach. Even if you think about like the last, the, the songs, you know, of Sia's like they, they do make up an album and they're all hits. Um, yeah, she's really something. Uh, Daniel, final thoughts. What are you thinking? Well, have you found it hard to have your uh, subscribers and social media following? Have you found it hard to get them to kind of switch over to be a fan of the music? That's such a good question. Like at first, yeah. Um, they, the good part is, is the diehards and the dedicated ones that have been there through it all, they right away just no problem transition and they always support everything and anything. But I did notice there was a point um, right after Alone in My Car where the song was doing incredible, but my social media was starting to like, when I started posting a lot about the song and the music video and the behind the scenes, like my engagement started to tip off. And obviously that was a little discouraging because it's like, I'm finally posting that something that actually a substance that I'm passionate about that isn't just a cute outfit and it's not doing as well. So like, it definitely like, um, scared me at first, but then I realized like, there's these little gaps in between each single where I can go back temporarily as influencer Nikki to keep like to keep the fashion lifestyle people happy and then during when I release a single I really feed the music people and after bite of me I specifically noticed and in like a crazy change um the engagement was definitely up and um I just had my first uh live show and meet and greet and there were people on there that didn't even know I had a YouTube channel so yeah so I feel like I'm doing it slow and right but obviously it's a little discouraging um and then like obviously when I post like live performances on my channel they like don't get anywhere near the views as like my fashion videos but over time they they catch up so it's just a different it's just different does that affect your motivation or desire to keep posting them do you ever like consider like "Eh, maybe I won't post this music video because it's not going to do as well if I post one about me trying on clothes or something at first, I mean, I think that's why it took me so long to do music for real, because I knew that. I knew that was going to happen. Um, I, or else I would have started this at 21. I've known my whole life I wanted to do this. I just had to get strong and confident and realize I may look like I'm failing at first, and I have to be okay with that. I am starting from the bottom. I am not an, like, I am an artist, but I'm not a known artist. And I'm a known YouTuber, but I'm not a known artist. So, I'm totally okay with feeling like I'm a newbie and I have to take the ego away and I have to be like, okay, it's fine if this doesn't look how I'm used to looking, like numbers wise. I feel like I ha- the numbers thing was it something I really had to overcome. Like that was, as, as YouTubers, you get so sucked into this number thing because it's like, I always say it's like this on YouTube when you, when you, it's like you're taking a test or an exam in school and your grades are posted for everyone to see. If you got an A and you're succeeding, people see that. And if you got an F and like two views and it didn't do well, um, everyone knows you're failing. And it, that's not in like school, but like career wise as an, as like a public figure, people will say you're relevant or you're becoming irrelevant. And that's such a hard hit. Like that's, it's such an ego hit. And I had to get over that. I I told myself, you either have to just like keep giving into your ego and just never go for your dreams or you go for your dreams and you say ego and that's what I'm doing now. So when I see validation, like alone in my car, you have no idea how that feels to me. Like I was expecting the, like the least from that song and seeing me get 1.6 million streams as of now, that's Nikki and Gabby views on a Nikki and Gabby video. So, and not, not that the numbers mean anything, but um, I definitely think like you have to, as an influencer, if you want to transition, you have to be okay with the criticism and the engagement being all over the place because you're, you train an audience to follow you for one thing and then you're trying to gain a new audience while changing what you have. So it's 
definitely interesting. That was such a good question you asked, though. Have there been moments in your life where you felt you, like, like you were becoming irrelevant? Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. I've been doing this for almost eight years. So I want to say, like, I have such a good memory. Like, there was a dip in 2017. There was a dip at the end of 2018, early 2019. There was a dip winter 2019 and currently there's a dip so there's always dips where you're like am I ever going to come back from this and you just have to just keep going like you said do you know what causes the dips or is that something you still haven't figured out there's so many factors it, I mean the quarantine and lockdown is one thing um sometimes it benefits the view sometimes it actually makes them bad because people don't care about surface level stuff during a pandemic mm -hmm. um so it's like it has to do with like, you you have to look at the numbers as actual people and like what's going on in their actual life. And like back to school sucks. Like once everyone goes back to school, there's a huge drop. Christmas, around, closer to Christmas, everything drops because people just care about the holidays. Um, I wanna say lockdown number one, views went up, but I'm noticing in this lockdown number two, people are freaking over it. They're tired of watching the same things on YouTube. They're tired of being home. I'm noticing entertainment being really hard right now because we don't know what to give our people to help their mood and, and to not be redundant because I'm stuck in my house too. There's only so many things I can film in here. So it's definitely a really trying time right now specifically, but everyone's in the same boat. I say that must be hard to kind of deal with because you were talking about how you're not as young as some of these young pop stars, but at the same time, you still are very young. So to feel irrelevant in your mid twenties must be a strange thing to kind of cope with. I felt irrelevant at 22. Well, it comes and goes. Yeah. Like, I, and I only started putting age to it since like 23. I feel like 21, 22, I felt okay. But then after that, I was like, oh no. And I think it's because in Hollywood, like all, everyone's 18, 19, 18, 19, and you're just like, or even younger. And you're like, but you know, the entertainment is universal. Like there's even parents watch stuff like, there's always an audience. I just feel like it's, it's hard to transition from being a quote unquote teen star to like an adult online, you know? Yeah. I, I totally understand it. Well, the question I do have is what is the future of the Nikki and Gabby channel? Is that going to, you guys going to try and keep doing that? Are you guys going to put a hold on that and just focus solely on whatever your, your solo stuff? Y'all have posted recently. Um, it's interesting because I feel like, Gabby and I have wanted to ch to keep it going and we still want to, but we wanted to change the format of like our business model. Like we used to just only focus on Nikki and Gabby and post every week and then on the side do our side channels, which we would call them. But like our grown adult selves really love our side channels more. Like we love filming those videos more. Um, but like all the we were just so used to just Nikki and Gabby. So we want to eventually upload more on our independent channels and um, really build our audiences there. So that way when we do upload on Nikki and Gabby and we are together, it's more of like a really, really awesome collab that people can look forward to. And the videos are amazing and they're not rushed. Like we, we want to just almost change the structure, but keep it going. Yeah, it makes sense. You've been doing it for so long. And I'm sure you guys are just probably getting bored of it. It's probably the same thing yeah. over and over and over again. It feels like we're on a loop and we're still sitting on a bed going, hey guys, I'm Nikki and I'm Gabby. And today we're doing a challenge. Like, I think that's, I'm 25. Like I'm not, I know I'm not old, but I'm like definitely an adult and I have adult interests. Like I love kitchen appliances. I'm not a teen, you know? <laughs> like, well, didn't you do like an X-rated something I saw on the channel? Um, we did a Black Friday haul and we actually showed like adult things we would buy and like show our friends and people loved that in the comments. So that's good. That makes me feel good. Nikki Damar, thank you for hanging out with us today. <laughs> Music, thank link in the description you. below. Also a link to your channels. Uh, I thank you for your time. Really kind of fascinating here. Uh, is your sister in Pennsylvania too? Yes, she's about 20 minutes away. And is she, she's going to be a family vlogger one day? Um, yes, she, I can't like say anything, but she has a lot of exciting things that are going on behind the scenes that are going to be great for her channel. 
And yeah, it's just, we're definitely going our separate ways in the most best way possible. Cause like what she's has, I, I don't want and what I am getting, she doesn't want, but we can very, very confidently support each other and be happy for each other. But her boy, is it a boyfriend or a husband? He's the a photographer too, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. I don't know how this all happened. <laughs> it's crazy. Nikki, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please subscribe and uh, notifications and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.